Good morning. It's Monday morning. It is, well, it's almost uh, noon here. We're going to go ahead and get started. We've got Bernanski's vlog live on Facebook. We got a lot to talk about today. We've got D23 going on in Japan. We got some updates there we're going to talk about. Saudi Arabia is making big moves as far as the movie industry is concerned. So we'll take a look at that as well. And we also are going to take a look at uh, the WGA, the Writers Guild, had their ceremony yesterday. So they got some awards out for screenplays, which we'll go ahead and take a look at. And then finally, uh, we have uh, just one or two quick things outside of that as far as the weekend box office is concerned. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that as well. We got a big morning. Hope everybody enjoyed the brand new episode that just dropped on YouTube. Give me one second here and we'll wait for everybody to get in and then we will go ahead and get today's Facebook Live started. So give us just one second and then we will be rocking and rolling. So one moment here. Excuse me. And uh, we'll get everybody squared away and set up. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. This is Bernanski's vlog. Good morning. It's Monday morning. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeremy Bernanski with Bernanski's Vlog. I've got my iced tea. I've got my iced tea. I've got my iced tea here. I've got the box office report from this weekend. And let's go ahead and take a look at one news story then that dropped this morning. We are live right now. We are going to cover Friday's box office. So for this weekend's box office, uh, on these Facebook Live sessions, we do like to cover the weekend box office. So what does that mean? That means that this is pretty impressive, as you'll hear in a minute. And I'm not going to give any spoilers, so don't worry. In theory, that film should have done gangbusters. This movie is so much fun. I think the rewatchability factor is super high. Wow, this was actually a fun time. I'm on board. Sign me up. Game over. If you're watching this on replay, thank you. All right, let's just get into it. Number five, number four, and number three, number two, and number one. All right, we're back. Good morning, everybody. This is Bernanski's vlog live on Facebook, and we have got a lot to talk about. Now, if you didn't get the start at the top of the show, D23 is going on in Japan right now. So we got some updates as far as D23 is concerned. Plus, Saudi Arabia is making some big moves as far as movies are concerned. And we've got the weekend box office to talk about. And the Writers Guild had their award ceremony yesterday, last night. So we're going to talk about that as well and see who walked away with the awards for uh, Best Original and Adapted Screenplays. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we're going to jump right now into the weekend box office. But before we do that, I hope everybody enjoyed today's brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog that dropped on YouTube uh, every Monday at 10 a.m. PST right here on, or not right here, on Facebook Live, but right here on Bernanski's vlog on YouTube, a brand new episode hits uh, that we talk movie news reviews and a little bit more. So thank you to everybody who's watching this right now on Facebook Live. This will also be available on YouTube as a replay. So thank you to everybody who's watching this on the YouTube replay. If at any time you guys do enjoy this portion of the show or any portion of the show, go ahead and give me that thumbs up because the thumbs up actually helps other people who like movie-related shows find this movie-related show on Facebook and YouTube. All right, so let's go ahead and jump now into the weekend box office and check out what everybody was seeing. Now, if you watched this week's brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog, you saw that I was able to get out to the theaters to check out 1517 to Paris as well as Peter Rabbit. And both of those films I enjoyed, uh, very different films, very different films uh, for different reasons, but still enjoyable. So uh, if you haven't gone back to check uh, those films out yet in theaters, but you're curious, you can go back and watch this week's brand new episode. The reviews are there or those reviews will be posting later this week to the movie review playlist on YouTube as well. If you have the patience to wait for them to drop separately, they will be available. All right, so let's go ahead on the show. We like to cover the weekend box office. We like to look at the top five, see what everybody was out there watching at the movies. And we like to go from number five all the way up to number one and then kind of talk about it. So coming in at number five this weekend, we have The Greatest Showman with 6,400,000. Number four is Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle at 9,825,000. Number three, 1517 to Paris at 12,600,000. Peter Rabbit coming in with $25 million, uh, but still not enough to take the number one spot from 50 Shades Freed with $38,806,000. So, 
pretty uh I mean, pretty open as far as like what movies are out there right now in the top five. There is a little bit of a pattern still showing for family and entertainment. When you look at the top five, we see Peter Rabbit, Jumanji, and The Greatest Showman. All of these are entertaining flicks and uh, are family films. I mean, outside of now, if you saw my review for Jumanji, you know that there's really only like one or two scenes in that film where I was like, whoa, I don't know. Like, I know I couldn't take my nieces and nephews to see it because... If, you know, if they saw a guy with like insects crawling in and out of his face, they'd freak out. But like outside of those one or two scenes, like if you if you have kids and you're like, I'll just cover their eyes during that part. Like, that's cool. Still a great movie. I think all three of these films are family friendly films. Uh, Peter Rabbit, Jumanji, Greatest Showman. Uh, Not surprising. I'm just sitting here wondering when The Greatest Showman is going to lose its voice because it's been in the top five for weeks now. And it really, I mean, it's slowing down, but it doesn't seem to be slowing down that much. So kudos to everybody who's going out to see The Greatest Showman, uh, as well as Jumanji. Peter Rabbit, I thought was a lot of fun. Now, if you heard my review, you know that there's three different types of storytelling uh, or methods of storytelling that they use in this film. My personal favorite was this kind of almost like a water painted art look that they use to kind of help move the story along at certain key points. And I thought that looked absolutely great. Uh, Peter Rabbit was surprisingly entertaining. Uh, I actually walked out of the theater smiling and thinking, wow, I didn't really think I was going to enjoy that as much as I did. It's no Paddington or Paddington 2 by any means, but Peter Rabbit was still a very fun family film. So check that out. Fifty Shades Freed. I haven't seen any of these movies. I don't know what's going on with these films. They keep making money. If you uh, saw this week's episode, you saw how it just the franchise as a whole crossed the $1 billion mark worldwide. So People are going out and people are checking these films out. So, hey, if you like these movies, go ahead and sound off in the comments below and let us know what it is about these films that keeps drawing you back. Uh, Because, again, $1 billion worldwide is nothing to sneeze at. So kudos to them. They are they're really making their money there. So, hey, all right, let's take a look at the top 10 just real quick. See if there's any surprises. We have Shape of Water, Hostels, The Post, Winchester. These are also in the top 10. So out of everything in the top 10 right now, there's only two films I haven't seen and reviewed, and that would be Fifty Shades Freed and Winchester. Um, if you guys are watching this on the uh, YouTube replay, I'll go ahead and throw up right here uh, a little card that you can click on, and that'll take you right to the movie review playlist on YouTube. Again, that'll pop up on the YouTube replay. So just click that when it pops up, and then you can check out all of my reviews for all of the films in the top 10. Again, except for Winchester and Fifty Shades Freed. But overall, the top 10 is a little bit more diverse. Again, it's family entertainment. It's drama. It's Oscar contenders. There's one horror flick in there. And then there's uh, the Fifty Shades franchise, which, hey, $1 billion worldwide. Can't knock it. So kudos to them for getting that squared away. All right, let's go ahead and move now into uh, this one news story that dropped here about Saudi Arabia. Because I saw it and I was like, well, What is that? What's the big deal? And then I did some research on it, and I was like, oh, that's the big deal. So give me one second to pull this up. So the Hollywood Reporter posted an article that says, the European exhibitor view to build cinemas in Saudi Arabia. And when I saw that, I was like, why why is this a headline? Why do we care if someone's going to build a movie theater in Saudi Arabia? And when I pulled it up, to take a look at it. And I'm going to throw this article. If you're watching this on Facebook right now, I'm going to throw this in the comment section. So you can check this link out if you want, while we talk about it. So give me one second to copy and paste that. If you're watching this on the YouTube replay, I will go ahead and throw it in the description box below. So just expand that. And then you can go right to the link there. It'll be there waiting for you. So check that out. But the big deal here is not that they're building, uh, movie theaters or what they consider, uh, what they're saying is they're going to build up to 30 world-class, uh, where to go multiplex cinemas in existing or new developments over the next three years. So a, that's good because it's construction and it's putting people to work and it's, you know, helping the economy. But more than that, uh, they're also investing a lot of money in Hollywood. There's a, uh, an article by Bloomberg, it's a little bit older, it came out last month, January 16th actually, and it talks about how the uh, Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund is actually looking to invest $500 million uh, into 
the talent agency WME. So they're starting to really invest money into the Hollywood market. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's why. Nope, that's still not why. So you've got them building all of these multiplexes, these cinema houses, these movie theaters. They're investing hundreds of millions of dollars back into Hollywood now. And that's still not the big reason for why this is a headline as far as I'm concerned. The big reason is it, it's been banned that they couldn't actually have movie theaters in Saudi Arabia for over 35 years. I didn't know this. This blew my mind. I was like, wait, are you telling me that we've had all these movies come out and they haven't had like a movie theater there? Like apparently not. And I'm going to go ahead and throw the article for Bloomberg in the comments section as well if you're watching this on Facebook Live. And again, if you are watching this on the replay, it'll be in the description box below. All right, give me one second there. So yeah, so they've got this 35 plus year ban on movie theaters in Saudi Arabia. And now they're like, all right, Let's go ahead and lift that. Let's get some movie theaters going in this country. And we're also going to start investing. So they're doing this like circular. We're going to invest in Hollywood, right? Into the talent agency, et cetera, to get help get these movies made, to help get these movies made with the right talent, et cetera, et cetera. And now we're also going to allow these movies to be shown in theaters in our country. So it makes smart financial business sense. I was just surprised and I was like, well, that's that's kind of cool. We should talk about that because I didn't realize Saudi Arabia banned movie theaters for over 30 years. So kudos to everybody in Saudi Arabia who may or may not be watching this uh, for finally getting movie theaters uh, in your country. So that's pretty awesome. So job well done there. All right, let's go ahead and move now into uh, the WGA. So I've got an update on our spreadsheet, the infamous spreadsheet that has been uh, following us as we go through all of the different awards programs here. So give me one second and I'll pop this up. But the Writers Guild, they just did their awards ceremony yesterday for um, screenplays, etc. So we've got an update here before the Oscars, which is going to be on March 4th. So we'll take a look here and see who won at the WGA and then what can we glean from that as far as potential Oscar winner. So here we go. Let me pop this up there. All right, so you can see here in that first column, the WGA Writers Guild of America, we have uh, two winners. And those winners are Call Me By Your Name and Get Out. So Get Out, pulling in another win here. So they got the DGA and the WGA. So that's all good news for them. And uh, what what did Call Me By Your Name one? Well, Call Me By Your Name, let me pull it up here in my notes. Call Me By Your Name actually won for adapted screenplay and original screenplay went to Get Out. So as you can imagine, uh, these are now being pushed a little bit closer for consideration for who may win come Oscar night, which again, Sunday, March 4th, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner uh, right there uh, in bright green, neon green, if you will. So. Kudos to call me by your name and get out. Um, I'm still I'm still leaning towards Shape of Water on this one, as far as the Academy is concerned. I wouldn't be surprised though again if Dunkirk wins, Lady Bird wins, Get Out, even Phantom Thread. I still think there's a small part of me that thinks that Phantom Thread could actually win for Best Picture and really surprise everybody. I mean, literally surprise everybody. As you saw, it just had the one one uh, one nom right there on that list. So it could surprise everybody. It would not surprise me because I love Phantom Thread. Uh, the music in Phantom Thread was is up there, just like it was for Shape of Water. Both of those films had incredible scores, and I wouldn't be surprised if either of those films won for uh, the best music as far as um, movies are concerned. So definitely, definitely check both of those out if you have the opportunity to. We're going to move now into D23 Japan. Now, if... You've been a faithful follower of this show. And when I say faithful, I mean going all the way back because one of the first episodes we ever did on this channel was for D23 in Anaheim. So now we're going to fast forward to where we are today. We're doing Facebook Live. We're doing more movie reviews. We've got DVD reviews. It's craziness. There's so much more content dropping now than, you know, seven months ago or whatever it was when we first launched this channel. So D23 in Japan. And if you don't know what D23 is, D23 is just, it's basically a celebration of Disney. It's Disney's convention where they talk about everything going on in the world of Disney, uh, movies, theme parks, etc. So 
they just had their first day was yesterday, I believe, or yeah, or Friday, Friday or Saturday. So they're a couple days in and we got some updates. So I want to cover those with you here real quick. So first, uh, at D23, they did sneak peeks. Now, if you aren't familiar with uh, movie releases, movie releases in America are different than movie releases across the world. We get movies at one time and then, you know, movie may come out sooner in Europe. It may come out later in Asia. Different marketplaces release films at different times. So they did sneak peeks for A Wrinkle in Time, which comes out here in the U.S. Uh, March 9th. They also did a sneak peek of Christopher Robin and Mary Poppins Returns, as well as Tim Burton's Dumbo. And when I say sneak peek, as well as the Han Solo movie, which again is coming out this year. When I say sneak peek, I mean they just dropped some footage uh, that no one else has seen. It's just specific to D23. So I'm curious to see kind of what may come from that if there's anybody out there who's going to be writing these up. And then those articles get over to us over here in the United States as to kind of what the footage looked like, etc., because Wrinkle in Time is going to be coming out in less than a month. So I'm not quite sure like what special special footage they would show for a film that we're about to receive here soon. I don't know what time or what date it's going to be released over there in Japan or in China. So I'll have to wait and see there. But that's coming out March 9th for us. Christopher Robin, I'd be curious to see that. Also, Mary Poppins Returns. I'm looking forward to seeing some more footage on that. The one that really surprised me, though, was Dumbo. Now, when I was told... Not I was told, but when I saw or heard, I don't remember if I read it or if I heard it, that Tim Burton was doing Dumbo, that surprised me because in my head, out of all of the old Disney animated films that we grew up on, Dumbo is not what I pictured Tim Burton doing. I pictured Tim Burton doing Pinocchio. I've always pictured him doing Pinocchio. I don't know why. Just when I look at kind of the different early animated, like the hand-drawn animated stuff that Disney was known for and still is known for for the most part. I always pictured Tim Burton doing a Pinocchio movie and that's kind of where my head was at. And then they're like, no, he's doing Dumbo. And I was like, interesting. So I, I'm really curious to see what footage or what artwork or anything like that was released for D 23, as far as his version or his vision of Dumbo is concerned. Cause again, I never would have pictured Tim Burton doing Dumbo. Pinocchio was always where my head was at for his directorial style and his visual style. So I'm really curious to see what's going to come from this Dumbo film. So checking that out as soon as it's available is what I will be doing. They also did uh, some never before seen footage for solo, a star Wars story, black Panther, Ant-Man and the wasp and Avengers infinity war, according to the D 23 website. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw that. Uh, Cause we're going to talk a little bit about the theme parks across the world. I'll go ahead and throw this article for D 23 in the comments section below. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube replay, this will all be in the description box. So just click that, expand that, and then you'll be able to follow these links as we discuss them here. So again, I'm curious, Black Panther comes out this week for us. So I don't know what footage they're showing over there. I don't know when this movie is going to come out in their marketplace, but I'd be curious to see that. I'm curious to find out what additionally they saw for Ant-Man and the Wasp since the trailer's already out and Avengers Infinity War. I'm curious if this is the same footage that they showed back at D23 for Anaheim or if this is something brand new that is legitimately never before seen. So we'll have to wait and see for that. But let's go ahead and move now into some of the breaking news. I'll give you the highlight reel for uh, the parks and resorts for Disneyland around the world. Because I thought this was pretty interesting as far as like what the updates are now. I'm a Disney guy. I grew up in a Disney family. So I love Disney. So like I would love to visit all these parks, especially because there's like a Tron light cycle ride. That I got to I got to get to that. So curious to see kind of what is going to happen as far as these new attractions going up overseas and what we're going to get over here in the States. But we'll talk a little bit about what's happening right now and what's happening right now in Disney Paris. Disney's Hotel New York is getting the art of Marvel and D23 actually popped up on their Twitter page. Kind of a sneak peek as to what that's going to look like here. So let me throw that up. So if you go to Disney Parks, it says, Take a peek inside Disney's Hotel New York, The Art of Marvel, coming soon to Disneyland Paris. So as you can see here, it looks just something similar to like what you get in like a modern hotel room. As far as like the design of the room is concerned, if it's going to be based off of New York, that kind of makes sense as to why it's more modern. 
But then you have like all of these artwork posters and stuff like that on the wall as far as uh, Iron Man and the rest is concerned. So looks like it could be pretty cool. If you're on Twitter, you may want to go to their Disney Parks page. As you can see there, it's just at Disney Parks. Click on that link and it'll actually take you to a short little article that gives you a little bit more information as far as that's concerned. But that is coming to Disneyland Paris. Also, at Disneyland Paris, uh, we are going to have the Marvel heroes are going to be walking around the park starting in June. So you're going to be able to see like Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, etc. They're going to be in costume just walking around Disney Paris. So if you're over there, if you're watching this and you're in Europe, get ready for that because that is coming out in June. And again, the link for this article in the comments section, if you're watching this on YouTube replay, in the description box. Coming to Disney Hong Kong, Ant-Man and the Wasp attraction which is going to be fighting Armin Zola and his Hydra Swarm Bots. Uh, they already have what's called the Iron Man Experience Ride, so they're going to be adding to that with Ant-Man and the Wasp. So this could be cool. This could be cool. And we don't know if uh, this is going to tie in at all to the films. You know, if you remember Armin Zola, he was more on the Captain America side of things as far as the movies are concerned. So seeing him cross over now into Ant-Man and the Wasp for a ride with Hydra Swarm Bots could be cool. We have no idea if that's a tie-in or anything like that to the new Ant-Man and the Wasp movie that's going to be coming out or if that's going to be part of Avengers Infinity War. We'll have to wait and see. We don't know if there's going to be any tie-in at all. This is all just speculation. So we have to wait and see. But pretty cool that they're going to be getting this new, like, kind of immersive ride as far as Ant-Man and the Wasp is concerned. I imagine it'll have to do something like Honey, I Shrunk the Audience or Captain Neo, if you're old enough to remember that, where you go and you sit in the theater or whatever. And it's kind of like a four-dimensional movie. I don't know. I haven't been to the Iron Man experience. I haven't been to Disney Hong Kong. But if you have any experience, throw those comments below and let us know what's going on. All right, Disney Orlando is getting Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster at Epcot. And this is going to be one of the longest roller coasters in the world. They're also going to be doing a new Star Wars-themed hotel that is cosplay-friendly slash cosplay-encouraged. So when you go to the Hollywood Studios in Florida... They're actually going to have a brand new hotel that is set up where you walk in and you don't like have windows. It'll, I guess I'm assuming from the description, it's going to be like Vegas. There's no windows. So when you walk in, it'll be like the window will be like a screen showing something else to make it look like you're out in outer space or you're on a foreign planet. And on the, in the little article that you can read, it talks about how like people can even dress up like their favorite Star Wars characters and walk around the hotel. So it's not just like the staff will be looking like Star Wars and people from other planets. You yourself, if you're a cosplayer, which I know a lot of people are, if you're a cosplayer and you actually go to the hotel, you can do your Disney cosplay or you can Disney, you can have a Disney bound outfit for Star Wars and that's encouraged at this hotel. So I think that's pretty cool. So check that out again. That's going to be coming to Disney Orlando and, uh, and then Disney Anaheim, we get Pixar Pier that opens up this summer, June 23rd in California Adventures. And they're also doing a Pixar Fest. It's going to be a new parade, and that's launching April 13th. So for everybody that is on the West Coast of the states, we're getting Pixar Pier this summer. That's going to be opening up in California Adventures. Plus, we just had Guardians of the Galaxy, that ride, open up in California Adventures. And then we've got uh, Star Wars, the new land inside Disneyland, opening up soon. And we're also getting a new parade launching in April for celebrating Pixar. So a lot of things happening in Anaheim. As far as Disney Japan goes, they're getting a big Hero 6 ride. Fantasyland expansion, which is going to include a new Beauty and the Beast themed area. And this expansion is also going to include a full-scale live entertainment theater. Now, I don't know if that means something similar to what we have in Anaheim. Because if you, on the walk from the Matterhorn, when you're going back towards Toontown... So on that walk, there's that giant outdoor theater that's like tucked away in the back. So I don't know if that's going to be like what this new thing is going to be or if it's going to be like an actual like indoor theater where you go in and it's, you know, like you sit down like it's a Broadway show or if it's going to be something like in Anaheim where it's an outdoor theater, but it's still really big. Right. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see kind of what the developments for that is going to be. Keep your eyes open. I'm sure if people will be posting their photos and stuff like that on Twitter. Uh, if they're if they have any um, models or anything like that up for us to see, because I know when I went to D23, they had the Star Wars land, 
what we're going to be getting uh, in Anaheim. They had a full display up as far as that's concerned. So you were able to walk in and it was a giant model set up of like to scale. And so we were able to see that. That was really cool. So I don't know if they're going to have anything like that as far as uh, these other parks are concerned. So again, that's Japan, Anaheim, Orlando, Hong Kong, and Paris. So everybody's got a little something to be excited about as far as that is concerned. And that is pretty much going to wrap up this week's episode. Let me just double check here, make sure we didn't miss anything on the board for what we need to cover. And then we can go ahead and let you guys get back to your Monday. All right, let me just refresh the page here on Facebook, make sure we don't have any questions about anything we talked about today. One second. Bum. Nope. All right. We're good. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you guys had a great Monday. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you guys are able to get out to see some of those movies. Don't forget Black Panther is coming out this week. Can't wait to see it. Going to see it probably a couple times. If it's as good as I'm thinking, I'll probably see it a couple times. If it's better than I'm thinking, I will see it a bunch of times. So hope you guys are able to get tickets for that and get out and see that with friends and family. It looks like it's going to be a really nice addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then right after that, ba-boom, Avengers Infinity War. Cannot wait. Ten years of storytelling culminating in one film. Uh, It needs to hurry up and get here. I can't wait. So everybody, again, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, thank you so much. If you enjoyed it, give me the thumbs up. If you are watching this on YouTube Replay, same thing to you guys. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you haven't clicked subscribe yet, now would be a good time to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also click the bell. That way you get notifications as soon as new content drops on the channel. All right, everybody. Again, I'm Jeremy Bernanski. This is Bernanski's vlog live on Facebook. Thank you guys so much. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Hope you guys are able to get out and enjoy Black Panther once, twice, maybe three times. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. All right, everybody, I'm out of here. Have a great week, and we will see you next Monday at 10 a.m. PST on YouTube for a brand new episode of Bernanski's Vlog. Have a great week. Go see Black Panther. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy Bernanski, and you've just finished watching a Facebook Live replay. Now, if you enjoyed that, you may also want to check out the weekly show playlist as well as the movie news playlist, which covers just the news segments from every Monday's episode. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe. We'll see you guys next Monday right here on YouTube for a brand new episode of Bernanski's vlog at 10 a.m. PST. Have a great week. Take care.